Welcome to Superhero Pow. I'm your host nerd, Tom Frumgen. As well as being a big superhero fan, I'm also a huge animation fan and a sword and sorcery fan. And let's face it, there's just not enough sword and sorcery animation out there, is there? The only real one is Frank Frazetta and Ralph Bashke's movie, Fire and Ice. And all the cartoons for TV are usually toned down. Way down in some cases. Still, there are a few gems, so let's take a look at the best of them. To start off with, as always, we need a little context. For all intended purposes, the sword and sorcery genre was created by Robert E. Howard with his Cull short stories back in 1927. I'll bet you all thought I was going to say Conan, didn't you? No, with Conan, Howard perfected the sword and sorcery genre in 1932, although it took about another 30 or more years for this subgenre of fantasy to get named. In 1961, Fritz Lieberman, creator of Far Hard and the Gray Mouser, coined the phrase stating that it accurately described the cultural base setting and the supernatural elements of the story. Getting into the finer details, sword and sorcery tales were often action-packed and personally driven, with sword-wielding protagonists and magic-wielding antagonists. First, the ones who didn't make it. Either their quality just wasn't good enough, or I didn't think they were sword and sorcery enough. This would be shows like Dragon's Lair, The Legend of Zelda, Disney's Adventures of the Gummy Bears, Adventure Time, Mythic Warriors, Guardians of the Legend, World of Quest, Vitor Starfire Champion, Disney's Aladdin, Highlander the Animated Series, Young Robin Hood, Skeleton Warriors, and Samurai Jack. I know I just broke a lot of your hearts there, but while sword and sorcery are in Samurai Jack, it's more sci-fi and samurai. Heck, they're in its name. So although excellent, it's just not sword and sorcery enough for me. Next, honorable mentions. King Arthur and the Knights of Justice, from 1992, running 26 episodes. It was basically G.I. Joe in medieval times, with the extra odd concept of an American football team standing in for the real Knights of the Round Table, battling the evil warlords led by Queen Morgana and Lord Viper. Somehow, no one really cared or even noticed that they weren't the real Knights of the Round Table. Still, the show had some great action and design. Unfortunately, the stories were quite lackluster. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, plus She-Ra, Princess of Power, starting in 1983 and running for a combined 223 episodes. Nothing can really else match the power of He-Man and his sister, She-Ra. While He-Man kept the planet Eternia and the secrets of Castle Grayskull safe from Skeletor, She-Ra fought to free the planet Etheria from the tyranny of Horde. Unfortunately for most of us, this show was just way too kitty to be taken seriously. Gultar and the Golden Lance, from 1985, running 21 episodes. In a land recently conquered by the evil warlord Tormak, our young hero Gultar has acquired the fable Golden Lance. Now Gultar seeks revenge on Tormak for whatever happened to his family and village. Joined by the dethroned Princess Golita and her kid brother Zorn, they are forever riding to the capital city of Bandazar. Despite a clever premise, the show never really goes anywhere, and the comic relief dwarves get way too much screen time. The Legend of Prince Valiant, an adaption of the famous comic strip by Hal Foster, starting in 1993 and running 65 episodes. A quite ambitious show as it follows the young deposed Prince Valiant questing to become a Knight of the Round Table, along with his friends Arn and Roanne. Once achieving that, he helps King Arthur deal with a growing rebellion led by Mordred. This was so close to being a great show, but the writing and the animation were never as good as they should have been. Conan the Adventurer plus Conan and the Young Warriors, from 1992 and running a combined 28 episodes. Not really adapting any of the books, Conan is joined by a rotating crew of friends seeking revenge against Rathamon for turning his family into stone. The wizard Rathamon is actually a lizard man from another dimension, attempting to take over the world for his master set. This should have been the be-all of sword and sorcery cartoons, but too many generic cartoon tropes made sure that would never happen. Still, the adventurer had a series finale, but it's best never to talk about the young warriors following. Now on to our real top five list. Hold on to your bastard swords. Number five, Blackstar. 
If the animation studio Filmation has one fatal flaw, it's that all their big hits were licensed properties. Superman, Archie, Tarzan, He-Man. Although a few years before He-Man, in 1981, they tried to create their own sword and sorcery hero for Saturday mornings, Blackstar. Akin to heroes like John Carter, John Blackstar was actually a future Earth astronaut. Crash landing on the fantasy world of Sagar, he somehow managed to get his hands on one half of the Power Star, the most powerful weapon on Sagar. Blackstar's half is called the Star Sword, and the other half, the Power Sword, is held by the Overlord, a magic-wielding warlord looking to enslave all of Sagar. By default, Blackstar joins the Freedom Fighters, including seven dwarf-slash-hobbit knockoffs, the Trobbits, the Sorceress Mara, and the Polymorph Clone. Like most Filmation shows, it suffers from recycled animation, but that animation is pretty cool, and the designs in the backgrounds are all awesome. Also, while it's a kid show, it was never the kiddie show that He-Man would be. Sadly, this great sword and sorcery show would only last 13 episodes and never come to a conclusion. Number 4, Thundar the Barbarian. Created by Hanna-Barbera spin-off studio, Ruby Spears, in 1980. While Thundar the Barbarian was part sci-fi, its tone is the closest to true sword and sorcery of any cartoon. Taking place in the future after a worldwide disaster. With the world now in ruins, wizards and sorcerers rule small surviving serfdoms of humans. Thundar, with his lightsaber broadsword, the Sun Sword, travels this post-apocalyptic world with his Wookiee, er, Mach, Ukla, and the Princess Ariel, a sorceress. It seems that Ukla and Thundar were both slaves of the wizard Sabian, until Ariel, his stepdaughter, helped them escape. One would then assume that she was the one who helped Thundar acquire the Sun Sword, giving them the means to escape. And now they spend their time freeing villages from sorcerer serfdom. Come on, how often do you get to say serfdom? Aside from missing the obligatory blood and boobs, Thundar is everything you want in sword and sorcery, and all reasonably well done. With designs by comic legends Alex Toth, he did our heroes, and Jack Kirby, he did everything else. Thundar lasted two seasons for 21 episodes. Number 3, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, 2002. Nearly 20 years after the first He-Man cartoon, we'll just pretend the more sci-fi The New Adventures didn't happen. The Cartoon Network hired Mike Young Production to reboot the show in 2002. The new show featured pretty much everything that was cool in the first series and made it even better by not being a kiddie show, making the show much more in line with True Sword and Sorcery and ranking it higher on the list here. The animation quality of the series was light years ahead of anything produced pre-2000. The writing was much improved too, with story arcs and character motivations. You can hardly watch the original series after seeing this, except for retro kitsch fun. Unfortunately, while they had plans for three seasons, only two were produced with no sign of She-Ra. So while arguably this was the best He-Man show, it was also the shortest one with only 39 episodes. Number two, The Pirates of Darkwater. In 1991, Hanna-Barbera tried again with another sword and sorcery syndicated show, The Pirates of Darkwater. It originally started as a five episode miniseries just called Darkwater. When it expanded to a full season, it was given the sexier name, The Pirates of Darkwater. It featured the complex world of Myrrh with its greatest kingdom, Octopon, fallen into ruin. Worse than that, the semi-sentient Darkwater was seeping up from the bottom of the ocean floor and killing all life in its path. Our young hero, Ren, discovers he's the Prince of Octopon and it's his destiny to find all 13 treasures of rule and use them to destroy the dark water and restore Octopon. On his quest, he's joined by a monkey bird and former pirate mascot, Nidler, Tula, a so-called wannabe pirate with a hidden past, and Isa, a fairly honorable veteran pirate. In their way is the pirate lord, Bloth, the captain of the mammoth Maelstrom, who wants the treasures for himself. For its time, the Pirates of Darkwater had some of the best animation and the best scripts for an action-adventure cartoon. But like most shows, the story never came to a conclusion, which is a shame because I'd love to see a final conclusion to the show. As it is, it ran for two seasons with 21 episodes. 
Number one, Dungeons and Dragons. It just had to be, you know. Created in 1983 for Saturday mornings by Marvel Productions, there's just no denying Dungeons and Dragons is the greatest sword and sorcery cartoon. Even though there's no sword in the whole show. And damn did that always bug me. A Vorpal sword, come on people. Either way, Dennis Mark and moreover Mark Evner, writer extraordinaire, developed the show based on the famous role-playing game of the same name. And it's almost perfect as far as sword and sorcery and fantasy go. As I'm sure you know, the show featured six modern day kids being sucked into a fantasy world. There the kindly wizard dungeon master looked over them and gave them magical weapons and assigning character classes from the game. Ranger, barbarian, magician, thief, cavalier, and acrobat. The most evil sorcerer in the realm, Venger, hoped to steal the weapons and finally gain the upper hand against dungeon master. Each episode featured the kids getting a mission from Dungeon Master with the hopeful end goal of returning home. And each episode was heartfelt and exciting. For its time, the animation was great, and it pretty much stands up today. And while it had no real story arcs, it did have an unproduced show finale script written. You can find it online. Dungeons & Dragons lasted three seasons for 27 episodes, which is pretty damn good for Saturday morning. So there's the list. Now isn't it an outrage that it's been 15 years and counting since the last Sword and Sorcery cartoon? And no, I'm not counting Adventure Time. That's a comical pastiche of Sword and Sorcery. So while we've been blessed with great fantasy shows like Avatar and Korra, they're not Sword and Sorcery. And damn it, I think it's high time for some more animated Sword and Sorcery. Stop sniffing glue, Hollywood. Get to it. And don't you bring up that Dragonlance thing. Are you kidding me? You stupid little mother, when I get my hands on you, I'll... <clears throat> anyway, thanks for watching, and tell me what you think below. And by crom, you better subscribe or I'll cut my arms off. Wait, that's not right. <laughs>